What's going on YouTube? This is Wayne with Wayne's Fish World. We are with the 55 gallon tank today and this is for all my saltwater fanatics. Let me pop a squat real quick. We're going to be talking about the 55 gallon saltwater tank and everybody wants to know what happened to the tank. What nuked it? I'm sorry I'm moving around. Let me get situated. Alright. What nuked it? To be honest, I don't know. It, a lot of people already know. I've already told them through the comments and, they, and a lot of people don't believe it. And to be honest, if I was you, I wouldn't believe it either because if it, wouldn't, if it didn't happen to me, I wouldn't understand completely. Well, I did a five gallon water change on this tank. I added five more gallons back to the system. Well, I went over to the, 50, the 125, trimmed some plants, did some maintenance, and I was done with the 125. I was ready to go back upstairs. I was done with my tanks for the night. And when I saw in the corner of my eye, all my fish were dropping dead. I instantly panic. I knew it couldn't be nitrate. I knew it couldn't be phosphate because I just tested my water. Everything was at zero or very close to zero. So I said, what in the hell is going on? And I said, it couldn't be the RODI water because it's pure H2O. And I actually mounted the unit right under the stand that night and then that happened. Um, I knew it wasn't that. I knew it wasn't the bucket because that, that container was strictly RDI water, nothing else. And I said, well, that only leaves the salt. Now, I've used some of that salt in that bag before. And I sealed that salt away very carefully. It was, it was kept clean. Now, a lot went through my mind. I've done some research and I've heard stories where people said they did a water change with their salt even after letting it deionize, meaning the salt mixes up. Even after that, out of nowhere, their fish will drop dead. I've heard a few rare stories about that. And <clears throat> a guy at the fish store said, you know, it could have been this. What if there was a chemical imbalance by the manufacturer? What if some, I mean, I don't know how they manufacture stuff, conveyor belts or giant mixers or whatever, but what if something got poured wrong? What if something got mixed wrong? What if something fell in on the uh, conveyor belt or in the uh, mixing station? What if, what if something was added wrong and that was to the bottom of the bag? Now, a lot of people will say in salt water, you want to take your entire bag and put it in a big drum or something, mix it up, keep a heater on it, keep it oxygenated, and that way your water is equally diluted. Meaning, some of your minerals will be at the bottom bag, some will be at the top. And if you mix all your water up, at once, meaning having a either from a 20 gallon drum, 50 gallon drum, 100 gallon drum, multi 100 gallon drum, your water is going to be equally diluted, meaning everything is going to be the same. Your PPMs will be evenly distributed, either it be uh, any trace element or anything, it's going to be evenly distributed. So that's what happened in my tank. And let's talk about what I've got on the tank. And it's funny how the tank is on like perfect control right now and there's no life in it. Um, I, I drained this tank and I let it sit dry. I got some bristle worms, I threw them in the sump just to savage some. Uh, all the pods, everything's dead. After having it dried out for a few hours, I filled it up with RODI water. I actually had a hermit crab live in RODI water for a short period of time. That was a big surprise. I guess he got slowly acclimated to I'm not sure. But he might be alive, but I think he's dead. Um, I drained it about two or three times with RDI water, letting all those nasty organics build up. Because some of the fish, like the blue hippo tang, his body is still in here. His remains are probably in the protein skimmer right now. Uh, actually, I need to clean that. You can actually see it's bubbling out. But, um,. You know, some of the fish, some of the chromises, the hippo tang, I couldn't get them out of here. I wasn't tearing my live rock apart because for one, some of it's glued down. And uh, I figured, you know, all the material, the organic material in the live rocks dying, it's not gonna hurt a few fish dying there as well. So I, I let it drain for a couple times and then I filled it up one more time with RDI water and I mixed it up with Instant Ocean salt again. Now I believe Instant Ocean was the culprit, but I've been using Instant Ocean ever since day one, so I'm willing to give it another try. Uh, I kept the sump on. Now let's talk about the sump. 
I kept the sump on, and we're going to talk about what's under my hood in the sump. I'm going to make a separate video for that. But um, I kept the sump on, that way the beneficial bacteria in here would remain. And that way when I jump start the system back up, it would do a quick cycle, and it worked. Two days ago, I checked my um, nitrates. Um, I wasn't checking ammonia or nitrites with an I at all for about a week. And then I checked nitrates with an A about two or three days ago. And I got a reading two or three days ago. It was at uh, 75 ppms. Now it's about 10 ppms. And the camera's not really doing justice. It's more, it's more yellow than orange, trust me. It, it kind of makes my skin look orange. But uh, I have to adjust it this way so the camera can pick up on the uh, saltwater lights. So, the tank is definitely cycling. It's almost ready to put some inverts back in it. Um, I will be adding my inverts first, and then uh, I'll introduce a few hardy fish and work my way back up. So let's talk about the equipment in this tank, what I've got going on. I've got a WP-40 on Wave 1. I found Wave 1's the best. Else mode's good because it's random, but I think Wave 1 is just really good. Um, you can see it actually blasting the surface. And let me turn this light out real quick. But you can actually see it. Oh, the phone's ringing. Shit. Sorry about that. But um, you can actually see it blasting some uh, oxygen. And that's not the return pump. You can see one, two. And you can see that's the same as the pump. Every time it goes doof, 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 you can see the uh, surface of the water getting agitated all the way from down there. I think that's a really good pump, guys. If you don't want to buy MP40, which is going to cost your arm, a leg, and a hip, and a toe, uh, that's a good, it costs about a hundred bucks. It's got the light sensor, so you know when it's nighttime, the pump's going to slow down so the fish can sleep. Um, I'm going to do a video on sand. I'm going to add a little more sand back in this tank. Um, for I had three pumps in here. I had one for surge. I had one for right and left as tides come in and out. This one pump, is taking uh, is taking the place of three other pumps, so it's going to save electricity. Inside the overflow, I have my Eheim heater. Now, the reason I put it in my overflow is something I learned from my pond. Um, one day, I actually accidentally drained my pond, and I learned to put my pump that circulates the pond on a on a block or something or a pot. That way, if it drains by a vinyl tubing have a hole or something coming undone, it can't drain all the way. So the heater's in there because the sun, that overflow cannot drain all the way inside. There will always be water in there. So if anything goes bad, the heater won't be exposed. It can't, hopefully it won't electrocute the tank or break. Let's go under the hood. Now I'm gonna do a video on what's under my hood a little later on, but this is a simple high tech. And what I mean by that, it's got, it's simple, but it's still, it's in the beginning of, uh, high tech. It's not high tech at all because I don't have Neptune systems or anything or controllers or whatnot because I don't believe you need that stuff. Uh, I think that's all for show. It makes your life a lot easier but this is basically what you need for a reef tank in the simplest way but it's still going to cost you a little bit of labor. Um, I didn't put a... I, I'm all about conserving electricity. I'm a conservative. Uh, you might hate me for that. I really don't care. But uh, I like conserving energy, and I, I, I'm going to get into it more depth, but that one pump does several things, and I made an RDI top-off system gravity-fed without using electricity. That means less money. So what's going on is this 10-gallon is siphoned, and i got to fill it back up. It has a uh, float valve right there, and when the water level drops, the float valve kicks on, and the reservoir goes down. And when it fills back up, the float valve goes up, shuts the water off. The siphon is still working, but it's just, it's like when you're making a siphon, you put your thumb over the end, it stops. But once you release your thumb, the water's going to flow back in. Um, that's a pretty good thing. It's using zero electricity, and it's simple. And the RDI unit is mounted under here. goes from the cold water line. I put a Y uh, from a garden hose Y into my cold water line, once to the washing machine, once to the RDI unit. RDI unit is actually filling this uh, up right now. I have it on stop right now though. And when I'm done, I can mount it back over the RDI uh, reservoir. And that's pretty much that. I've got the flow valve from eBay. There's an eShops 125 on here and you can do the judging for yourself. How black is that skin mate? What do you think? 
That's an excellent protein skimmer for what you pay for it. I don't think you can get much better protein skimmer for the price you pay. Uh, this, you're probably saying, what in the hell do you have a hang on the back filter on your saltwater tank for? Well, I believe the sump gets dirty, and I've learned this the hard way. The sump keeps your display clean, but eventually your sump's gonna get dirty if you don't do much maintenance on it. And I don't feel like siphoning it out every freaking week. So I said, I wanna find a way to keep my sump clean, get a little water flow, and keep it clean. And I said, I have a hanging on the back filter lying around, and I was inspired by this. I saw a dude's video years ago, and it has always been in the back of my head, but I never did it. But the hang on the back uh, filter keeps sump clean, and when I need to clean the cartridge from keeping uh, uh, detrius build up on the cartridge or just a lot of shit there's no there's no difference from shit building up in your mechanical filter pads to your filter pad and your hang on the back filter I think that's a myth I had a hang on the back filter on my old salt water tank was which was this when it was upstairs for several years with zero nitrates with a hang on the back filter and a heavy bio load actually I had more success with that when it was a simple tank than this higher tech tank uh, sometimes the more you put on it, the more trouble you get, the more things can break. Uh, but the hang on the back filter works. This is a heat lamp with a DIY LED light from Lowe's 5000K. And that's on my refugium. My refugium took a uh, hit hard and it's starting to grow back. Uh, there's sand in there just to anchor it down. Over here is my deep sand bed. It's a shallow sand bed. I mean, a uh, isolated deep sand bed. And what I did that for is because I don't want my deep sand bed ever getting disrupted. If your sand bed gets disturbed, it's going to leach out bad things. Sulfuric uh, hydrogen gas. And it's going to wreak havoc on your system. This is a DIY mechanical filter. I might replace it soon, but it works great. Um, it's drilled separate. Each each layer is drilled differently and it's to maintain water flow. The first chamber is for a DIY uh, emergency trap. If a fish is small enough to get into the overflow, it won't get beaten up. I had micron socks, fish got sucked up in there, they got beaten down by the water flow. If a fish is small enough to fit through the overflow, it will live in this chamber, then I can get it. The second one is mechanical filtration. I just take polyester uh, pillow fabric and put it in there and it works great. It's a cheap solution. The third chamber is empty right now, but I used to keep my County Pure Elite in there. That's pretty much it for the sump, except for the return pump. Return pump feeds in to a Y, goes to my phosphan reactor, which is new. I've got a video coming up on this, and it's uh, removing phosphate from my water. This one pump feeds the phosphan reactor, goes up here, it's a reducer right here, goes back up, hits this new UV light, which I've also got a video coming up on. Oh, I already did that one. That one's already up. I'm sorry. Feeds into here, cleans my water, removes parasites and stuff, feeds back into display, and acts as a circulation pump. So this one pump removes phosphates, it cleans the water with the UV lights and removes parasites, it acts as a return pump, and a mechanical filtration. And I have a non-electrical uh, RDI reservoir auto top-off system. Not to mention, the only thing the RDI unit uses is your well pumps water. So all in all, this is a very electrical, um, electricity conserving plan I did. And the whole goal is to remove nitrates and phosphates. And now it's back on track guys. And I just did a test and my water I showed you guys is pretty yellow. You can see a good uh, yellow there. That's a good, uh, that's a better look at it. I am probably by next week, I will be putting inverts back in this tank and maybe one or two small fish, maybe some chromis or something. I'm not too sure. So guys, I hope that answered all your questions. If you have any questions, let me know. Oh, I almost forgot. Let's talk about lighting. We all want to know lighting. Um, I'm not going to turn the other timer on, but what I'm using right now are the Fluval 46 inch, 48 inch LED lights, reef capable, and I'm going to do videos on those very shortly. Hope you guys like this video. Comment, rate, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Later.